All right, guys. This is Mr. Melberger with uh, Chapter Five of uh, Parrot in the Oven by uh, Victor Martinez. Okay, Chapter Five: The Garden. Deep down, I hoped Mom would wise up and leave Dad for good, or maybe go live with Grandma for a while, or run off on her own, if that's what she wanted. Either that, or that Dad would finally open his eyes to see how close it was uh, to being his last chance. But none of what I wished was going to happen. On the day Dad got out of jail, Mom ordered us to clean this and that. Uh, she, she was so excited. Singing church hymns she uh, learned as a girl. She took a long bath with some of uh, Megda's creamy soap and dusted uh, powder on her neck and shoulders. We went on the bus to pick him up, and after we returned home, I lingered in the living room reading my science magazine. I'd found it thrown away in the alley behind uh, Giddens uh, Pharmacy, a big uh, boot print uh, tracking the front cover and its slippery page wrapped, uh, warped by rain, but still amazing with pictures of uh, flashy colored planets uh, whirling around in a thick uh, black space and grinning uh, dinosaurs fighting. All afternoon, they talked over the kitchen uh, table about how things were going to get better. Dad promised he'd never go anywhere unless he said what time he'd be back and how he was going to find a job and not just uh, look for a job, since looking for a job kept him at the pool hall, with all the other guys just looking for jobs. Mom promised she would never again embarrass him in front of his friends, and some other things I couldn't make out. Finally, when they were done promising each other uh, everything, night was uh, beginning to push away the light, and they went to sleep, laying slowly um, down on their squeaky bed. After staying up for the longest time with everything inside me scary and about to collapse, I heard rustling outside by the elm tree, and then Nardo's round face appeared at the window. He was drunk, mushy around the mouth, his eyes watery and strained. After losing his grip and stumbling a couple of times, he finally hoisted his belly over the window ledge and flopped in the room. He rose clumsily, uh, to his feet and sat on the bed, staring at the uh, floor as if over a cliff. He tried to take off his shoes, but only uh, knotted the laces. Seeing me awake, he started to ask about Dad, but I uh, shushed him with my finger. Well, he said, Swain, did he get out? He got out. Now shut up, I hissed. He sat there, staring at me for a while. What? Are you going to make it all right again? That's what they say. Yeah, those two, they're crazy, you know, that they're crazy. They ain't as crazy as you, I said, rolling over and covering my shoulder, then turning back around. If you keep talking, they're going to come in here and gang up on you. Like I care. You better care, because I think they'd rather be fighting with you than each other. If I was you, I'd lay down and go to sleep. Nardo curled his head arm around the bedpost and smiled. Yeah, that's funny. That sure is funny, he said, moving his head up and down. They'll probably be picking fights with us tomorrow, huh? Shut up and go to sleep, I said tiredly. He looked at the mirror over by the door and noticed a swirl of his hair out of place. He tried clumsily to press it down, but it kept popping uh, back up. Then he walked over to the mirror and peered into it, as if noticing uh, something he hadn't before, pointing a lazy finger at himself. For a long time, he stared at the uh, mirror, uh, pointing, then walked slowly back to his bed and plopped down asleep. I woke the bear uh, to the bear bulb uh, stringing, uh, stinging my eyes. It was morning. And Dad was in the room, breathing heavy, like he'd just gone out of a shower. He grunted at me and 
uh, roughly shook Nardo awake, who got up, uh, digging his fists in his eyes, still uh, s starched from drinking the night before. Dad slid out of his out his belt around the loops of his pants and began slapping it against the mattress, threatening to burn our legs if we didn't listen. He stood around, bullying us into our clothes and without breakfast drove us to Grandma's. Dad must have sizzled on some uh, smart plans while he was in jail, and now after all the smooth talk with Mom was over, he's ready to go into action. I'd I'd rather have gotten dragged across a cactus desert and dropped thirstily in the Lake of Salt than listen to him, but he had us there in the car, muscling his voice um, so our minds wouldn't wander. Uh, Grandma lived in a, a clapboard house at the corner of two uh, old gray roads that the city, after uh, scrimping for years, finally paved over with asphalt. The asphalt came cheap, without uh, curbs, and on the first dangerous sun, it melted and became lumpy. From then on, cars driving over it jostled in a chorus of springs, and people's heads bounced wildly. Dad pushed the car door open, leaned back on the seat, and said he wanted the yard raked and hoed before he came home. And I mean spotless, he said, pointing a menacing finger at us. He leaned over and slammed the door shut. Cleaning a yard to my dad meant even the grass edges had to be trimmed and plants uh, polished. He reminded us that he'd check in on our work, making sure we dug out uh, to his satisfaction the uh, tufts of grass near Grandma's roses and pinched uh, out whatever uh, mealy uh, bugs and aphids were shooing on the stems. We could tell it was going to be one of those hot days when asphalt softens and ants uh, foam up from the dirt with a scratch on a, of a stick and when dogs bark. The sound is dry like hollow, uh, hollow wood. But it was still morning and the first hour was a smile and thoughts of lunch. Nothing but a few uh, shrubs to chop and leaves to rake. Nardo had trouble coming back from his hangover. He uh, moved like a ground sloth and kept uh, gulping water from the garden house. He sobered up a little when we uh, began to clip off the small yellow weeds uh, choking the roses. The bigger shoots over by the Nepal cactus had to be pulled. The roots uh, sunk deep and we knew in a month They'd spring up again, so we pulled with every muscle until a big chunk of main sock uh, plucked out. We wore our arms out, pulling these weeds as well as it start uh, as stacking the bricks Dad had at once stored in the uh, corner of the yard to build a barbecue pit. We found a couple of centipedes uh, numb underneath an old plank and crushed them with our heels. We sent uh, chips soaring from the axe as we cut out the roots of a dead tr uh, trunk and dropped its bulk uh, thundering into a wheelbarrow. When Hiroshio, my grandma's cat, came around, we were shopping the last weeds growing inside the flower beds. Nardo called to him, but he was uh, stalking near the cherry tree. When the chirp of a bird scattered in the air, he stiffened, his nose twitching, and uh, ears uh, cupped like radar antennae. Uh, then he darted away, clawing up the tree trunk. When we stopped, finally, the sun was prickling like a hot rash on the back of my neck, and a piece of lava was wedged in my spine. My brother's face was swollen and uh, burnished as a new penny. A channel of sweat slipped down the bridge of his nose and plopped on the dirt near his feet. His eyes, drowsy with sun, watched it like someone who didn't deserve sweat. Hey, you know what, he said, uh, stretching. He pulled his shoulder back and the muscles tightened under his shirt. With one last punch of the hoe, he exploded a puff of dirt. I'm going to get some Kool-Aid. How about you? 
You want some Kool-Aid? Why don't we finish first? We only got this uh, to do, I said, knowing that once he went inside, work was over. I looked at the cherry tree standing brilliantly at the edge of the garden. It leaves, uh, its leaves twirling and echoing light. It wasn't just a cherry tree. Long ago, Grandpa had chopped off uh, limbs and uh, grafted saplings of different fruit. One branch sprouted plums, ano uh, plums another almonds, and still another peaches. More, uh, most were cherries, though. When in season, they uh, glowed ripe and flashed like Christmas balls. I'll wait for you right over here, I said, pointing at, uh, to the tree. No, you just keep on working. I'll be right back. Don't worry. I'll be right back, Nardos uh, made a move to leave. But seeing me straighten up, he put his uh, hand uh, surely on my shoulder. Don't you believe me, he asked. I said, I'll be right back. No, I believe you, I said. I just want to make sure... Uh, you're not going to take a nap. I'm not going to take a nap. What's the matter with you anyways, he asked. You've been so suspicious lately. You act like I'm going to quit or something. When I didn't say anything, he slid the hoe uh, along, the, along his knee, levered it up into the air, then snatched it quickly by the neck. I'll be right back. Believe me. It was no use arguing with Nardo. He could go around the same point from 20 different uh, angles. You do what you want, I said, uh, waving my hands like it weighed a ton, but I'm going to sit down. Now that I'd given up, he was pretty uh, springy. He hurt, uh, hurtled the back step in one leap and stopped at the door. Man, he said, smiling, and they call me lazy. I shuffled over the uh, faucet, swishing the dirt from my uh, pants. My joints uh, felt slack, and my lips were cracked enough to bleed if I mouthed a zero. I'd taken my shirt off hours ago, and when I pressed my fingers against the skin of my shoulder, I felt the numb warning of a sunburn. Sla uh, splashing water on myself came to mind, but my neck and shoulders uh, chilled at the thought. Instead, I, uh, I hosed the water into the cup of my hands and washed my face, drying it with my shirt before putting it back on. As the sun winked over the ledge of the roof, the shadows of the cherry tree stretched across the yard. Uh, smudging Grandma's row of cactus. Um, pinching the water spout, I flecked some wa water on them and washed as the curling wisp of hot dust exploded from the spiked green skin. When Nardo came back, he too, uh, he had two clinking glasses uh, in one hand and an ice pitcher of Kool-Aid in another. He uh, watched the clouds hurting, heading west and frowned at the puddle of water foaming like dirty milk near the faucet. Are you going to work anymore or what? He asked uh, accusedly. No, I said, inspecting my fingernails, half mooned with dirt. Hell then, let's quit. He hunched back. Uh, he hunched back his shoulders and blew up his lungs then tilting his head back he began drinking from the pitcher in huge noisy gulps then he filled a glass and finished that shaking the purple uh, stained ice cubes he put the pitcher on a wood stool nearby besides he said breathing heavily grandma's awake Grandma's awake? Yeah. He pressed his arms against his sides, uh, feigning fear. She said she just woke up from a dream where Grandpa was sitting on the bed beside her. He lay down on the uh, shaded grass, linking his fingers behind his uh, neck. Like my dad, my dad's. His hair was uh, swirling and glinted in the sun like... Uh, splashes of water 
I looked at the muscles along his ribs where the teacher had ridden up and thought of my own flabby waist. Nardo only had a mulberry birthmark on his shoulder, which he always rubbed when thinking. I had a face, uh, Dad said, would look handsome on a horse. Grandma came around from the front wearing a flowery Japanese kimono. Her eyes were too strong, so she uh, gro groped around, uh, uh, homing in our faces. Um, ropes pulled at her from the ground when she walked, and her sighs sounded like roots releasing from moist earth. Nardo put the pitcher on the ground and brought Grandma the stool, which she stared at a while before sitting down. It belonged to my grandpa, who had died some years back after his brain got uh, fevery and he couldn't recognize anyone, even himself in the mirror when we held it up uh, one day for him to comb his hair. A sickness broke down the muscles in his legs, then broke down the stories uh, about Mexico, then smoldered in his heart. In the end, his only memory was of the desert he crossed to plant his foot in the country. Grandma used to keep her face pretty like a baby doll, dabbing cold cream on it every night. She used to tighten her hair in knots and dye it black like a young girl's. Now her face was webbed with wrinkles and her hair's uh, swirly uh, white and frazzled. She still sprinkled on perfume and was still wild about uh, pain her lips. Even now the sprinkles became uh, palmfuls and the lipsticks wandered, uh, lipstick wandered smearing her face uh, eerie. She gazed dreamily over the yard. It was beautiful back then, she said. It was a garden and every house had one so bright a person's eyesight blurred. She remembered uh, Browsing along among the flowers, smelling odors that even people in heaven would envy. My brother and I scanned around, trying to imagine the same wonder. But what we saw wasn't as sweet as Grandma remembered. I even tried to imagine neighbors, which she no longer had, except far down the road. One by one, they had all moved away. She must have sensed our confusion because she said it was true. The yards... Uh, the yard wasn't as joyful as when she and Grandpa were young. She said it was uh, mostly the drought that sucked all the gardens away, but we knew that wasn't altogether true. There were still reservoirs of water, even in the uh, rings uh, showed how much the drought had uh, shrunk them. It was more than uh, more that the city planned to build a freeway and was slowly uh, buying and wrecking the houses, plowing the gardens uh, gray. Grandpa and his neighbor, Mr. Uh, Volasivik, um, refused to sell, and for a while the city held back its plans for a freeway. Grandpa kept the garden alive, and Mr. Uh, Volasivik uh, kept his pasture green. Then Mr. Volasivik died, the city bought the land from his son, and then Grandpa also died, and with him, the garden. Since Mom was the oldest, my dad figured she'd got, uh, get the house when Grandma died. The sun was a spot of dried blood on the um, horizon when Grandma waved at the cherry tree with her finger. Ale, she said. There, a few uh, puckered cherries lay on the ground. A mantis unfurled a blue sail and uh, skirted uh, across the grass. There, she said again, there. Long ago, under the dropping branches was once a small girl, our mother, with a handkerchief covering her dark pony eyes. She was swinging a stick at the bull, uh, the bull pinata slung up on a rope. And by a chance... Uh, she burst open the clay pot nestled inside the uh, bull's belly. Fistfuls of chocolates and candies came cascading out of the wound, 
a womb. Everyone screamed with excitement. The children from once, uh, the once full neighborhood of children scurried about, eyes watery and chubby hands uh, stashing uh, candles, um, candies into their pockets. They laughed with a cute, greedy look. Grandma said, only a child can make. Que curiosity uh, se miraban, she said. How curious they looked. Grandma Rosa died a few months later, and after the burial was, uh, we gathered at her house. The sun was as bright as an egg yolk, leaking a orange uh, finger across a porcelain plate, and there was a smell of uh, bruised plums and burning grapevines drifting through the trees. My aunt Letty cried so loud my Uncle Joe scolded her by uh, twirling his finger. Now, now, uh, Letitia, he said to her, uh, there's nothing you can do for her now. With a shredded throat, Letty told him to shut up. Although uh, moist around the cheeks, Mom didn't cry. She sat on the living room couch next to the uh, shuffling cooler. Um, she didn't wear black because she had no black dress, and my dad could only scrounge up $7.28. Mom claimed this was as good as it could be expected, considering the funeral costs, but not half enough for a reasonable black dress. She used the money instead to buy uh, Mexican sweet bread and make uh, burnello, fried uh, tortillas sparkled, uh, sprinkled with cinnamon and sweet potatoes that uh, bled a dark syrup. Sitting there, Nardo, my cousin Rio, and I stared at Grandma's old chair. I remember once sleeping on the floor and a mouse scuttling across uh, my stomach. I awoke to see Grandma under the tulip lamp, asleep, her head uh, circled by a glowing moon of light. Then I heard scuffling as a mouse stretched across on the wooden floor. Suddenly, there was a cushiony thud and the mouse left, let out a tiny piercing yeek, as though driven through with an ice pick. It was Horatio, my grandma's cat, who uh, had spotted the mouse from his perch on the mantel and pounced on it, uh, pinning it between his claws. As my eyes brightened in the dark, I saw Horatio's fur uh, glowing as he uh, sort of smiled down at the mouse. Then. He released it and scurried away to search for a hole. But Horatio leaped again, clasping and pawing the mouse around the floor like a ball of yarn. I uh, watched in fascination as he let the mouse go three or four times, rolling it around with crisp, playful uh, precision until he finally snatched it up and throttled it down his throat. Um, the tail... Uh, churning around his mouth. Grandma's chair had bark uh, design on its wooden legs and carved uh, bear claws for hand rips. Already frayed on the cushion, wobbly in the strut, its wooden leg stri uh, scratched. No one except Grandma ever sat in it. I began wondering about what would happen to it now that it was empty for I leaned uh, forward on the couch and in a half whisper told Nardo that the night before I had dreamt about Grandma. She and I were walking together in the mountains when suddenly under our feet a huge earthquake erupted with fire uh, tearing open the earth like a sharp knife through uh, seams of old leather. I woke up shivering and uh, soaked in a cool sweat. The walls of my room were like blue eyes, like the sky after a clean rain. Dreams fascinated Nardo. He could analyze people's sleep. Grandma claimed that it was because uh, he had a birthmark in the shape of an eagle's wing on his shoulder. Nardo said that before leaving for heaven, uh, the dead sometimes sprinkle messages inside the ears of those they love. 
He didn't know why Grandma would want to leave a message for me, but the dream sounded like a warning. I would die alone, he predicted, in a very cold place. I leaped from the couch and hammered him on the arm. We wrestled around the living room uh, floor in front of Mom, too buried in her grief to pay us any mind. Dad wasn't too buried in grief, though. Irked by our noisy tumbling, he burst in from the kitchen and with one of his shoes uh, crowned us both on the head. He pointed the shoe threateningly at everyone and said uh, that we all better get the message quick about how to behave or else. After Dad's scoldings, we uh, sat quietly on the couch across from Mom. She was looking down at the floor as if searching for scuff marks. We all became bored and antsy. My cousin Rio pretended to be mournful. And Mardo coolly studied the dust on the window pane, uh, grinning because the blow Dad had given him hadn't even hurt. Only Petty was having fun. She came into the room. Uh, revving her lips like an airplane and uh, spanning her arms. She circled us at an angle, swooping past Nardo and snagging her wing on uh, his pants pocket. She flew on a crippled uh, half wing a little way before crashing. When she started playing at uh, making faces, we giggled, but stopped when Dad poked his head in from the kitchen. I'm going to burn someone's leg, he warned. Everyone really shut up after that and uh, star uh, stared at the wall. I munched on a sweet potato and uh, gazed at the uh, ring stains inside my uh, coffee cup. Finally, ignoring everyone else, everybody's eyes, looking uh, after his, my heels, I snuck out the uh, door. Outside, the air was a sleek, powdery ash. It would uh, dusted Dad's car and Uncle Joe's panel truck, parked grill to grill on the uh, gravel driveway. Steam rose from the hoods in uh, thin, ghostly clouds, and blanched by the sun, the windshields uh, shone like morning frost. I climbed over the hood of my uncle's truck and walked over to the cherry tree. Uh, clambering up, uh, clambering up on a on a branch, over the wood uh, shingles of the house, I could see a, a blonde strip of Mister uh, uh old pasture. The grapevines had been uh, plowed over, and the house lifted on struts. Then. Uh, Rucked away, but I could almost see old Mr. Uh, Volkus Bisk uh, standing there in a gray sweater, raking and uh, burning leaves, a great plume of smoke rising into the clouds. In the kitchen, I heard Dad talking loud. Everyone else's voices made tiny booms of sound against the walls, but my dad's voice cut through the walls. He was talking to my Uncle Joe about how impossible it was going to be to keep up the place and how he'd have to sell it. He could almost hear the uh, strategy sizzling around inside his head, like hot and swirling uh, inside a tin cup. I sat there imagining the cherry tree's roots slithering down into the earth and how it would have uh, to be pulled out by the, a strong tractor. And also, I thought about how, in the end, Grandma couldn't read anymore under the tulip lamp, only sit on her armchair, looking up at the ceiling, swallowing and swallowing, and once she put her arm on my shoulder, I felt the dead weight of her strength abandoning her. In my family, uh, we're taught to touch the hand of the, ones, uh, the one who had died. So... At the wake, when my uh, mother called, I walked towards the casket, and in the full bloom of my family's eye, I touched Grandma's hand. A lump of salt caught in my throat, uh, closing like a fist as I studied the bark skin of uh, her face, each crack uh, sealed with perfect makeup. She was 
she will uh, flake away into dirt. I thought, just as the sun does the bottoms of a pond during a drought. Her shadow will be erased and her uh, soul will drift to heaven like the fluff of a dandelion in the wind. And then it will blossom into another garden so bright the colors will hurt your eyes. That's how I imagined it. For Grandma, that's how I wanted it to be.